I have a kind of a wild story to tell you. It's uh, it's it's a uh, it's tough. It's very important a newborn to get that colostrum. It's it's um, a tough situation, but. Right, it's super dangerous. Watch it, Jared. I kinda wanna tell you a story and I'll show everything that's happening at the same time, but. As you guys already know how transparent we are with everything, uh, we show you the good, we show you the bad, and uh, it's been a lot of bad this summer. And I, I say bad, there's been some rough things that have happened this summer and some tough situations for us, but it's uh, it's part of it. We know that and we're, we're, we understand that's part of life when, you, when you're raising animals. You're raising essentially almost a wild animal. What we did was, is lots of people reach out that are interested in raising bison. Uh, this particular couple wanted to come and uh, they're cattle people and they wanted to convert to bison. And so we were kind of excited about that and that opportunity. So uh, we, we brought those people in that had some experience and we showed them around and we, uh, how we do things and explain the difference maybe between bison and cattle. And um, while they were here, we took them to see Big Joe, did a normal herd check, everything there, saw the red dogs. And then we went to Dunbar's herd. And when we pulled up in the pasture, uh, one of the first things we saw is uh, I saw a female, it was a Canada cow, off by herself uh, in the middle of the pasture. And by this time, I think it was 1030-ish. And basically, it was already about uh, 95, 96 degrees at that time. I remember looking at my watch to see how hot it was because I said, she's got a baby up there. Uh, and just in my mind, I didn't announce it. I just saw it and we continued to go see Dunbar and we talked about them a little bit. And I said, we need to go. We gave them cues and whatnot. And then I said, we need to go check on that mama. I bet she's got a calf. And uh, just by our language and behavior, so she's got a calf. These would be first timers and, and they not they shouldn't be calving at this time. But this is the Dunbar herd, right? You got the South Dakota uh, heifers and then we've got our Wolverine heifers in there. So they're two years old. And uh, we circle back around and we approach the mama and um, the calf is laying there. And I, I could already tell something was wrong. When you pull up, that calf should have popped up. The calf should have stood up and mama should have got a little worried. And uh, you know, the warning flag should have got, should have came, the tail should have came up. The calf didn't get up. You know, the ATV should have scared it and didn't get up. So I was like, well, this is interesting. Yeah, we were out here yesterday. Try to get a little closer. You can't get too close because mama's mama's in protection mode naturally, which is good. And uh, calf couldn't get up and uh, pulled up a little closer. And mama was chill and the calf barely could lift its head up. And I just instantly knew something was wrong. In the back of my mind, I know that these shouldn't be having calves. Obviously, they were mature enough. Haas was mature enough and they obviously came in heat as a uh, yearling and so when they come in heat as a yearling uh and hoss was in that patch with them hoss obviously did his thing and we got a calf it's exciting to have a red dog but when you have a two-year-old having one they should have them they should be getting pregnant at two and then have a calf at three the uh, the next spring I, I i couldn't get to the calf right it's super dangerous situation Right, we're dealing with bison. Couldn't get to the calf. And so, first thing I did is like I always do, in a first time situation, I called Gerald Parsons, uh, my vet. And I said, Doc, here's the situation. And uh, you know, there's this couple's with us, Marissa and I, too, at the same time. Now they've done this and been around cattle before uh, in this situation. So they were kind of used to it. Me as a bison owner, was not used to this situation. You may keep it or take it. Okay, I'm with you. But, but if you can 
If uh, is that something I can get at Stillwater Milling? That's good. Okay. Is there a certain kind that I need to get it? No, just calf colostrum. Okay. All right. It, if it's small, probably give it about a quart. A quart. Okay. If you can get a pine head, that'd be good. At least a quart, and then in about oh, if it's not getting up and nursing by then. Uh, in about uh, six hours, do it. Or... He said, well, he said, you can, if you can get the calf and you can get the mama to follow you, take her all the way up to your barn, you've got to get that colostrum in them. That colostrum is very important. Sheep, goats, uh, cattle, horses, deer, any type of animal, hoofstock, I know, domestic for sure. It's very important to for a, 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 a newborn to get that colostrum um, straight from mom within hours. I mean, it, it, it should be within minutes. And most of the time when these calves are born, they're up in 10 or 15 minutes. It's amazing. I had to move because of the wind, but so basically, uh, sorry, I had to move because of the wind. It was getting a little windy. Um, but so he said, you've got to, um, you got to get her up. Get that colostrum in them. So, I was like, oh boy. And I knew, I knew that if we left that calf out there, it's, it's, it's getting hot. It was, you know, by this time it's 11 a.m. There's no shade. There's only a couple trees out there and we could have picked her up and moved her, but like the calf was already behind. Uh, Doc said, this is what you can do. And so, you know me, I said, okay. And so the first challenge was, how are we going to get this calf, right? And then so, and my aunt and uncle live right here next to this pasture. And he has an ATV and he was at work and we went and snagged his ATV. And uh, so we got two ATVs now. And what we did is uh, we took this challenge on. And uh, I asked this couple, what do you guys think? What do you, you know, got their opinion? And they've been in these situations before. They're like, we do this all the time in the winter you know, for cattle. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. And so, um, and so we did. Can you go forward? Yeah. Uh, we got the two ATVs. We kind of created a V sort of and what we did was is uh kind of kept the mom from getting us uh and then jared jumped out grabbed the calf and then it was on <laughs> needless to say well some things got rearranged because it was getting pretty sketchy the mama obviously was pretty upset, pretty ticked off, understandably. Ended up with me and the red dog in the back of the ATV. What, hun, what I was saying is, what about the little barn? She standing? Then I sent Marissa and Joel basically to open gates for us.
and it took a couple of times but and it was dicey for sure um she got to where she was pretty upset See ya, sure. and the calf moaned a couple of times Yeah, just ease her on back. She's found her. Me and Jared were working together. He was driving the ATV and he could barely hear me. And I'm just trying to get the cow to follow us and she would follow us and every now and then she'd stop and turn around and go back. And so this happens once or twice. We know that these animals get stressed out and so that's happening Oh, she back up. Sorry, she keeps losing track of her. Do you, so, want, do you want me to go wait at the gate? Wait at that gate for her and then lock it when we come back by. In the, in the far one? No, the middle, the halfway. The halfway? When we come through, go ahead and shut it. Okay. We're going to peel off and go to that gate. I'm just going to do one ATV to not stress her out. Sure. And then. We'll just go I'm get her around. attention yeah. and uh, we'll just try it again. But they're going to shut a gate when we go through yeah, there. Yeah. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, she, you know, she kind of beats the ATV up a little bit. Doesn't, doesn't. Just got bit by a fire ant. Uh, doesn't damage ATV, bangs it around a little bit because she's upset, right? She wants her calf. See if you can ease out and she'll follow us. There you go. She stopped. Now she's coming. She can't figure it out. Watch it, Jared. Uh, keep going, Jared. Watch it, Jared. Hey, keep going, buddy. She's getting aggressive. We eventually get her all the way up to the barn. It took us a little bit, and if you guys don't understand the layout of our land, it's, it's kind of an L shape, but we basically had to get her from the Dunbar herd, which is the furthest point of our property, all the way up to the front of our property. That's probably anywhere from a half to three quarters of a mile. It was a quick deal, but we had to run through the middle of the Big Joe herd pasture and the Big Joe Herd females found us. And of course, 
they're way too interested and way too curious. They wanted to know what was going on. So they came and met us in the pasture and started following us along. The girls got ahead of us, were opening up the gates for us. We were dealing with all of that while the other females from the Big Joe herd were following us. It was a struggle, but we finally made it to the Ponderosa barn. If you wait just a second, wait just a second. Can you pull up to that corner, Jared, so I can get off? Okay, this is good, thank you. Jared and I, I hop out and Jared leads her into the corral. Our I main corral had out. to move Cora out uh, of the way so she could get in here. Watch yourself. Okay, that's good. And then I laid the calf in an area where we could still get access to the calf. And <clears throat> in the meantime, the girls have already left. They got a bottle and they have a syringe and they're getting colostrum and milk replacement at this point. It's about a 15 minute at least deal to drive to Davis or same place to get all of our supplies from, get that and then come back over to the ranch. In the meantime, I get some water, cool its belly off. I put some water behind its neck, not extreme cold water. I mean, it's straight out of the rural water uh, faucet what we have. Cool him off a little bit and I'm thinking, it's so hot out here. Let's take him in the office. It's a little bull calf. Let's take him in the office now that we've got her pinned up. I think we gave her some feed or something to calm her down. Let's take him into our office and let's put him on the concrete floor. And it's air conditioned in there. Like, let's cool him off because he was hot. He was in the back of the ATV. And, you know, that animal, he doesn't show signs of stressing out because he's so young. Um, but in reality, it's a bison. It's stressing out. It may not be telling us that. You know, it's panting a little bit. It was panning. That calf was panning when we pulled up to it and, and saw it for the first time that morning. It was panting and its tongue was swollen up. And uh, Doc said that that swelling is because it's dehydrated and more likely hasn't had its colostrum. So uh, that's why we made that decision is to try to rescue it. Uh, so... Jared and I took the calf into the office, laid it on the concrete floor, and it's it's not really changing its mood any necessarily, and um, or its its behavior. And uh, I, Marissa and them are about to pull up, and I go into the feed room. I, I I leave him in there for a little bit with Jared. I think the calf was in there five to ten minutes. Marissa and then pull up and Jared comes walking out of the office into the feed uh, room where, where this cow is actually at this point, uh, his mama, and he gives me that look and shakes his head. Within five or 10 minutes after doing all that work, getting the mama to follow us, getting her up here in the corral, pinning her up, getting the calf separated uh, basically from her in a safe way, where she can still smell it, still touch it, and putting it in the office. By the time we put that calf in the office, he had died in like five or 10 minutes. Heartbreaking for sure, um, another heartbreak. Uh, and it's very heartbreaking and sad when it's a red dog. It's a little innocent animal. Um, and I've had these conversations with Doc. You know, He made a really good point that, that sticks out to me. There are struggles that we go through, you know, we've we've gone through this year with calving between the Texas cow that had a calf dead inside of her, uh, Bell Star losing her calf back in May, just randomly a perfectly healthy calf 
and then this situation. And um, he said, you know, we just don't think about it enough of a blessing what it is when you actually have a red dog and you have, you know, you have these calves, these mama have these calves and we don't have to do anything. 99% of them are born completely fine. And we don't stop and think about how anything could go wrong. And we have so many born that are perfectly fine. And this summer we've had some issues. And again, we're at a, another heartbreak. I just want to thank Jared and Joel um, for their help. And man, did they show up for an adventure. And, uh, you know, I don't know if we've converted them to be bison people or not. I know that's a memory that we'll always share together and, and now be close friends. And so Jared has since signed up for the NBA and we're going to see him there at the conference this coming uh, January. You know, I don't know how, uh, you know, besides work in bison, I don't know how uh, real and authentic you can get uh, when you show up to uh, learn about bison. Then you deal with the, you deal with that. And they were great. They were not afraid of anything. And they jumped right on board with us and tried to help us rescue this calf. And unfortunately, it didn't work out. Um, do uh, there things that I'd do different? I wouldn't have bred her all the way to this barn. Our other barn in the back doesn't have a good corral system. And it was, it was a lot closer. That's our target in the meantime is to get that thing fixed. Uh, and, and uh, situations like that where we can have a barn back there when we can have quick access. Um, but would I trade it and, and, and not go back and, and try to rescue that calf? Absolutely not. I wouldn't trade it. It's a learning experience for sure. I could have left the calf out there and it would have burned up. I mean, literally burn up when we're having these 100 degree days. And uh, if the calf couldn't have got up then, it wasn't going to get up at all. And so that's why we tried to make things better. Now, can you do that in Yellowstone? Can you do that at Custer State Park? Absolutely not. And, and, and I think there's a, there's been some media and some events this summer where people have tried to rescue red dogs. Now, that's completely different. I want you guys to understand that. Those are wild animals. They're not like mine, okay? Mine are right down here. And I'm sitting here watching, talking to you guys. And uh, just want you to know, these animals down here are not like them they see us every day we have to give them cubes we give them hay we bring them up and we work them we do a lot of those things and so they're used to us um they're not very aggressive we don't push them to be aggressive you can't do that in the wild i just want you guys to know that um but we tried to save this calf i could have left it and i and i would have pulled out there the next morning probably that evening and it would have been in the same spot and uh, i told marissa it's worth it Let's try. Um, there's some things that I ought to try to do differently, but that calf needed that colostrum in it very quickly. Needed something in it because it basically had an empty belly and it couldn't even get up. So, uh, it has been one heck of a summer. One heck of a summer. And uh, I just want to uh, try to be real with you guys three chords in the truth right and uh that's what that's what we're about and um it sucks telling you that story and uh sorry you have to sit here and listen to me <laughs> talk about it uh but that's how i tell my stories and that's what our channel is about is about raising this animal it's good and the bad and it doesn't matter what animal you raise we do a lot for these animals and um unfortunately we had to try to help save this calf and it didn't work out for us in the end and uh at the end of the day, when I go to bed at night, it, it's very sad and, and it weighs on my heart. And it weighs on Marissa's heart. And um, it's one of those things that we just, uh, you learn from and you you try to, next time that this happens, you, you think about those moments. And so you guys let us know what you think. And if you've been in this situation before with any type of animal, let us know. We love to hear those stories and, and read those comments. And so, uh, sorry to bring you the sad news again. Hopefully, uh, when we get some rain and stuff and this drought can lift a little and give us a little break and some, some good things can happen. Uh, but we love what we do at the end of the day and very thankful we get to raise the American bison and very thankful that you guys get to be a part of this and, um, you know, be in the grind with us on, uh, this journey of raising these awesome animals. Thank you guys for watching us. We'll see you guys soon.